Welcome back to this week's technical. Today is just a short snappy one on an aspect of animal biology that has some relevance for livestock farmers. If you are unlucky enough to know a vet, the chances are they will be fond of a big scientific word, especially if it incorporates some Latin. We will wheel those phrases out at every opportunity. You've got to justify those vet school fees somehow. One such phrase is lactational anestrus. Let's break that down for a second. Lactational referring to lactation, i.e. the period when a female mammal is producing milk for her offspring, and anestrus, that is a period of suppressed reproductive hormones and reproductive activity. So, take it together, you've got it. Lactational anestrus is that period of suppressed reproductive activity during lactation. How does it happen? There's a complex feedback loop involving several different hormones. Two of the most important are oxytocin and prolactin. During suckling by the offspring, these hormones are released and they inhibit the release of other reproductive hormones, effectively putting the brakes on the reproductive biology of that female for now. Why does it happen? That's anyone's guess. I'm not an evolutionary biologist. If you've just given birth, it might be sensible to have a grace period before the next one, just to slow down the pressure on mum and improve the chances of the current offspring. Lactational anestrus is seen in varying degrees across several different species. So in farmed livestock, you see it in cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, but you can even go further afield to other species, including the great apes, even humans. So for example, of women who aren't breastfeeding their newborn infant, about 80% of them experience a period within 10 weeks after birth. If they're breastfeeding, that drops to just 10% of women. Taking it back to livestock, we know that removing beef calves from their mothers, even for short periods of time, does appear to lead to quicker return to normal reproductive hormonal activity and improved pregnancy rates compared to non-separated cows. Although age and body condition score seem to have a big influence on how big this effect is. For most UK beef herds, it's also not a particularly practical endeavor, perhaps for calf or foot dairies or for housed beef herds, it might be of relevance. Interestingly, when we look at dairy cattle who are producing far more milk, they don't seem to show the same level of lactational anestrus. In fact, they return more quickly to cycling activity than beef cows, saying that they do show a greater level of anestrus post-calving for other reasons. Presumably the absence or much reduced lactational anestrus we see in dairy cows is because the hormonal profile produced by a calf suckling its mother 24 hours a day versus being milked out between once and three times a day by a machine is different. I don't know and I don't think anyone has explained whether that's to do with the frequency of suckling or even simply the presence of a calf, the physical stimulation. Perhaps it's both, perhaps it's none, but it's an interesting effect nonetheless. If we start to look at sheep, we don't often come up against it. That's because in the vast majority of cases, by the time the ewes have gone back to the ram for the next round of lambs, the previous round of lambs have been weaned. But the effect does still exist. If you look at experiments where ewes are either dried off or simply milked twice a day by hand immediately after lambing, versus those ewes which are nursing their offspring, for the dried off or hand milked ewes, their hormonal cycles get back into gear more quickly and they start to cycle by about 30 days. But for those that are nursing their lambs, that takes 60 to 80 days. Again, not particularly relevant when we're weaning lambs probably after 90 days, but if you're running at say three lambings in two year system, it might start coming into play. So that is lactational anestrus for you. If you want more information, of course, there is more in the video description. Don't be afraid to ask your vet either. As always, if you enjoyed that and you'd like to see more like this, as well as some vlogs and podcasts, just click that subscribe button. I'll see you for the next one.